Hey guys, it's Christy with Christy's Custom Creations. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful beginner's glitter Christmas mug. The cup that we are using today is a mug and I purchased it from Stainless Steel Depot. It is a hog brand cup and this is my favorite brand of cup to use for my glitter and even non-glitter tumblers that I make. I start off by putting the mug onto a football which is secured to a piece of PVC. I prep my cup with acetone on a cotton pad. You can buy the cotton pad and the acetone from pretty much any store, Walmart, CVS, even the dollar store. They're very inexpensive and easy to find. Some people prefer to prep their cups by sanding them before painting them but I find that just using acetone works just fine. So next, I take my cup outside and I spray it with a flat white spray paint. I prefer to use Rust-Oleum. I've had really good results with Rust-Oleum. It dries quickly and it has very good coverage. After painting, I bring the mug inside and I let it dry for approximately 30 minutes to an hour until it's completely dry. Now that the cup is dry, it's time to put it on my cup turner. I will be applying the glitter by using the epoxy method. The epoxy method is basically putting a very thin layer of epoxy on the cup and then glittering the cup from there. You don't want the epoxy to be too thick because if it's too thick, it will soak up too much glitter and it will actually make the glitter look wet. The epoxy that I'm using to put the glitter on the cup is a fast set epoxy by Stone Coat. This is a very fast curing epoxy, so once it's applied, the cup can actually be handled within about an hour of applying it. I only use the fast set epoxy underneath the glitter because it can yellow over time and I don't want my cups to become discolored. For my top coats, I use a different type of epoxy that has UV inhibitors in it, and it actually prevents your cup from yellowing. For this video, I went ahead and sped up the mixing of the epoxy because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me mix epoxy for five minutes. That can become quite boring, but make sure that your epoxy is thoroughly mixed. Scrape it off the bottom of the cup and the sides, scrape it off your popsicle stick, and then remix again over and over again until it is clear. You'll know that your epoxy is properly mixed when it's no longer cloudy. I mixed up about 10 ml of epoxy, but to apply the glitter to your cup using the epoxy method, you really don't need any more than maybe 5 ml at the very most. You're going to apply a very, very thin layer of epoxy to your cup. I like to use a gloved hand. I don't want the epoxy all over my hand. Make sure you don't have any dry spots while you're applying the epoxy. Pay attention to the handle. Make sure you get it all over the handle and smooth it out as you go. Don't forget the epoxy on the bottom of the cup as well. Now that the cup has epoxy all over it, I take my gloved finger and I start at the bottom and move towards the top of the cup, smoothing out the epoxy.
I do this because I don't want any weird lines in my glitter and I want my glitter to lay smoothly and flawlessly. Once I've smoothed out the epoxy with my finger, I take a small blowtorch. Uh, I bought this blowtorch here on Amazon. It's a culinary blowtorch and it is perfect for making cups. It basically pops any little micro bubbles and makes the epoxy super smooth, ready for the glitter. The glitter that we're going to be using today is by Berry Humble Glitters. It's called Fluffer and it is absolutely beautiful. I use a paper plate to catch my excess glitter. You don't want to waste it because the glitter that falls and doesn't attach to the cup, you can put back into your shaker and use for later. I sprinkle the glitter generously over the entire cup and also on the handle very well. I make sure and sprinkle the glitter on the bottom and then I go back over the entire cup, sprinkling glitter very generously in order to fill in any wet spots or spots where it may not have grabbed the glitter well until it's fully covered. I then knock off any excess glitter by tapping the handle of my cup holder. I take the excess glitter that I caught with my plate and I pour it back into my shaker jar so that I can use it for another cup later on down the road. Once the cup is completely dry, I mix up another batch of epoxy. For this batch of epoxy, I'm using Faux Rizzle UV Epoxy. It is my favorite epoxy to use. It comes out like glass and it is it is beautiful and super smooth. Very easy to work with as well. For this coat of epoxy, I'm mixing up 15 mLs in order to fully coat the cup. I will put this coat of epoxy on the cup and let it spin for approximately four to six hours. After that, I can mix up another 15 mLs of epoxy and apply a second coat of epoxy over the glitter so that the cup is super smooth. I have again sped up this portion of the video, but when you are mixing the epoxy, make sure to mix it slowly and thoroughly. Scrape it off the sides of the cup and the bottom of the cup. Scrape it off the popsicle stick and then remix. You should mix your epoxy until it is clear. If you have any cloudiness at all, then it's not properly mixed and it needs to be mixed some more. Now that the epoxy is fully mixed and ready to go, I turn on my cup turner and start spreading it on the cup. I spread it generously in order to fully cover up all the glitter and not have any dry spots.
Once I'm sure that I've got good coverage with the epoxy over all of the glitter, I take my glove finger and starting at the bottom and slide it up the cup, smoothing the epoxy out. After that, it's time to break out the blowtorch again. I start at the bottom of the cup and I work my way around the cup, up and down the sides, popping any micro bubbles and smoothing out any imperfections in the epoxy, making it super smooth. Once the first coat of epoxy over the glitter was dry, I applied a second coat of epoxy and let that spin until it was completely dry. Then it was time to sand the edges of the cup to get rid of any roughness from the glitter. I used 220 grit sandpaper and I lightly sand around the edge of the cup, along the bottom, and on the handle. I use a flat razor blade to clean the edge of the cup and get off any excess glitter and epoxy that may have gotten around the rim of my cup. We are going to be applying a water slide to this cup, so make sure you don't sand any areas where your water slide is going to be applied at. I only sand around the bottom, around the top, and around the handle. Please ignore the black spot on the palm of my hand. I was working with alcohol inks earlier in the day and alcohol inks can stain your skin and it's really hard to get off. This is the water slide that we're going to be applying to the cup. I actually printed the trees on the bottom for an unrelated cup and I try to print as much onto a piece of water slide paper as I can because I don't wanna waste money try to fit as much on there as possible. I also really like to print double of whatever I'm putting onto a cup. Just in case I mess one of them up, I have an extra. When I cut out my water slides, I like to curve the edges around the name or photo that I'll be putting on the cup. Make sure when you're cutting your image out that you don't cut too close to the lettering or the image as you cut. You wanna leave a little bit of space, as you can see, between where you're cutting and the letters or the image. Since the mug is curved, I like to cut each line out on this larger image and lay the pieces individually. That way I don't have any wrinkles in my water slide and everything goes on smoothly. My favorite water slide paper to use is the clear water slide by Blingasm. I print it on my HP inkjet printer. Once it prints, I give it a little bit of time to dry, about 15 to 20 minutes I let it dry, and then I take it outside and I spray a very, very light coat of Rust-Oleum clear spray paint over the water slide. I spray a total of three to four layers of the Rust-Oleum clear paint onto the water slide, letting it dry completely between each layer. Once the paint is completely dry, that's when it's ready to be cut out so that it can be applied to the cup. Now 
Now that my water slides are cut out and ready to go, it's time to apply them to the cup. I take a small bowl of lukewarm water and I soak my water slide in the water. I let it soak for about 20 to 30 seconds until the water slide is ready to slide off of the paper backing behind it. Now that the water slide is ready to slide off the paper backing, I slide it directly onto the cup. Prior to placing it on the cup, I had put a little bit of water on the cup from the bowl with my finger and the water slide slides around freely, which makes it very easy to put into place and get it exactly where I want it. I like to turn the mug around different directions, make sure that it's right where I want it before I pat it dry with a soft cotton washcloth. Some people like to use wet paper towel or damp paper towels. I personally prefer a soft washcloth. After I pat it dry, I take the washcloth and I very, very gently wipe the image, pushing any excess water out from underneath the water slide. Make sure and get out any air bubbles and excess water underneath because you want it to lay on the cup flawlessly. It's time to soak the next image, which is the uh, truck with the Christmas tree and get it ready to apply to our mug. The water slide is now sliding free from the paper backing. It's ready to go on the cup. I wet the cup just a little bit. Repeat the same process as I did with the letters above it. Go ahead and start soaking the next water slide. I'm gonna line the truck and tree up. Get it right where I want it. Turn my cup around, make sure it's where it needs to be, and then pat it dry with my cotton washcloth. I like the placement, so I slowly and gently start pushing the water and air bubbles out from underneath the water slide, sealing it to the cup. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the rest of this process and apply the rest of the water slides the exact same way.
Now that I've let my water slide dry for at least an hour, it's time to mix up my last batch of epoxy. For this batch of epoxy, I mixed up 20 milliliters. I mixed 20 milliliters because I want a nice, thick, last coat of epoxy on this cup so that it has a beautiful glass-like finish on it. Now that my epoxy's mixed, I put my glove on and put my cup back on the turner. I'm going to apply this last coat of epoxy the exact same way I did the previous coats of epoxy. Make sure to get good coverage with the epoxy over the entire cup. You'll notice that the areas where we had previously sanded, for example, around the rim, on the bottom of the cup and on the handle, as soon as you apply the epoxy, it will become super sparkly and shiny again. You'll never be able to tell that you sanded it there. I actually made this Christmas mug as a gift and the person who's getting it has no idea that it is going to be delivered to her house within the next couple of days. I would like to note that you may want to invest in an apron because epoxy tends to get everywhere. I have ruined so many outfits and shirts from getting epoxy on them. Now that I have this last thick coat of epoxy on the cup, I'm going to spread it out just like I did previously. I'm going to take my finger, start at the bottom and work my way towards the top and then wiping the bottom. You don't want a lot of excess epoxy on the bottom of the cup because you don't want the cup to sit unevenly. It's time to use the torch again. We're gonna make a quick pass across the bottom and then quick passes up and down the side of the cup as it spins, popping any micro bubbles and making sure that the epoxy smooths out nicely. I'm gonna let the cup spin for the next six hours or so and then I can turn the turner off. I always make sure to clean up the inner rim of the cup with acetone and wash it really good with Dawn soap before I send it to its new home. Here is our beautiful finished product. Look how beautiful that glitter shines. I just love this cup. It's one of my best sellers. Thank you so much for watching my first ever cup tutorial on YouTube. This is such an easy, basic cup and it's so much fun to make. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave your questions in the comments and I promise I will answer them. Please keep in mind that all cup makers make their cups a little bit differently and we all have our own little quirks of how we like to do our own. Take my ideas, make them your own and start making tumblers. If you like this video and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button below to follow my channel. Thanks for watching and y'all take care.